Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight to our first dev stream of Last Train Home. My name is Flo from THK Nordic and with me is Petka, who is the general manager of our studio Eschborn Games from Brno in the Czech Republic. Good evening, Petka. Hello, everyone, and good evening. So we are about to show you the first gameplay of our upcoming uh, real-time strategy game, Last Train Home. And Petka, I would say, without further ado, we will jump right into the game now, okay? Okay, let's switch to the game. Uh, so I started in the main menu and let's start with the new journey. And that's going to provide you with some introduction uh, about what the story of the game is all about. because there will be some talking, we too will stay quiet and uh, yeah. let the people listening to what is set in the game. Do you know everything about the game already? Ah, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> I think I made my homeworks. So let's yeah, check. We can, do a little, we can do a little test afterwards. <laughs> okay, Th there's going to be the test at the very end. During the Great War, later known as World War I, the Czechoslovak Legion was commissioned to fight on Russia's behalf in exchange for support for an independent Czechoslovak Republic. However, the Great War exacted tremendous loss of life and economic collapse in Russia, igniting a revolution that deposed the Tsar and devolved into a bloody civil war. The Bolsheviks established the Red Army to consolidate power and rule over a united Russia, whereas the White Army rallied to oppose the Reds. The Czechoslovak Legion was now in a very delicate position. An armed force in a foreign land with no clear allegiance to the Reds or Whites. Moreover, Russia's western borders were still held by powers opposing the establishment of Czechoslovakia. Thus, the Czechoslovak Provisional Government ordered the legionaries to remain neutral and travel eastward to Vladivostok to board ships back to Europe. Nonetheless, during its evacuation via the Trans-Siberian Railway, the Legion became embroiled in armed conflicts affecting the course of the Russian Civil War. Now, we learn the story of The Last Train Home, a work of fiction inspired by the writings of a brilliant member of the Czechoslovak Legion and a veritable instrument of history. The story begins with an ambitious captain under the command of Major Gazdik, who leads the last unit of Czechoslovak Legionaries, headed to Vladivostok by armored train. Okay, so now is the time for the tough question. Do you know who I am in the game? <laughs> Your role. Oof. Are you just... You're not Langer, I know that. You're not Gazvik, I know that yeah. one. So you're just a random soldier, I guess? I'm the captain. Or do you have like a... I'm the, the captain. captain. Okay. Yeah, I'm the captain, yeah. So. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I mean, we heard the introduction now about the um, historical background of the game. And this is something that I found um, very, very interesting because I, I studied history actually at university, but I never heard of that, to be honest, that there was a Czechoslovak legion fighting in World War One. Yeah, you know, for the Russians actually in Russia, and that um, also for the first time after World War One, this is the first time there was a Czech or a Czechoslovak state. It never happened before. Yeah, so I was yeah. really impressed how well this is uh, tied into actual historical events. Although we are telling a fictional story, yeah, this is like the thing yeah, just exactly. based on historical events, right? Yeah, and you could have heard even the Free English dubbing this, this far. I heard you bragged you'd I'm not be hearing anything, to be honest, from the chat, because I try so, to uh, keep it silent. Um, are you doing? Come on. Because it would give, uh, like, you know, uh, um, an echo. An echo. Well, the rest so of the I just have no the sound train. at the moment. But of course, I, when I played the game earlier, I heard the English dubbing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there's going to be even some, let's say, immersive voiceover, uh, which is going so to be uh, the Czech and Slovak legionnaires. They are going to be speaking Czech and Slovak, uh, whereas uh, the Enemies, they are going to speak their native language. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so so this enemies is, is a very... Oh, sorry, please go, go on, ahead, please. please go on. No, I think uh, enemies is a very interesting thing because the game takes place in Russia, yeah. where um, it's not, but you're not fighting the Russians, you are uh, trying to get out of the country. So we heard that, that you're trying to get to Vladivostok, basically through all of Russia, all of Siberia, to the very end uh, of Russia in the Far East. 
And that's because in Russia there's a civil war going on, right? Exactly. And so you have like Bolsheviks versus like, what is it, loyalists or something, I guess? Loyalists, yeah, uh, to the fighters, tower, yeah. Right? The rats and the whites, uh, what they are called. And um, yeah, basically, so they are not enemies per se, but just opposing forces who are trying to stop or rob or whatever, uh, harm our legionaries. And all they want, of course, is to get home. And maybe, uh, basically, without interfering too much in the Russian civil war, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, the, the thing is that uh, the legionaries try to be as net neutral as possible. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, in this uh, really difficult situation of uh, the uh, civil war in Russia, uh, they try to be neutral, uh, which is a difficult thing to do, uh, but uh, they are somehow managing, at least at the very beginning. But we'll see how the story goes. So, so much for the background uh, so far, so let's focus on the gameplay for now. Uh, you're now here in this uh, very first mission with four different soldiers, yes. yeah. one being a female, I find that very interesting. Exactly. Is that uh, historically correct or did you take some freedom at this point? Uh, it's actually both, uh, because uh, we learned that uh, the female soldiers weren't allowed to be part of the Czechoslovak region. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are sources that tell us uh, that uh, they were actually on the battlefield, that they, they were fighting, they, they just weren't allowed to be uh, that uh, part of the region. Yeah. We are Czechoslovak legionaries okay, on our so way to Vladivostok. What have we seen now? We saw a burnt down farm and now we are coming to yeah, what's left of that, right? Yeah, exactly. Like uh, there was the burnt out mill and we are trying to find out what happened. My son refused. We have a family to feed, he said. So they killed him. And the children. You soldiers are all the same. Killing and saw you know. Just leave and let me die in peace. If the Bolsheviks wanted oh, that's food, rather sad. why did they yeah. leave the sacks to burn with the mill? But yeah, now we are basically faced with the this grim this aftermath of World War One. There's Red still Army. hard and brutal fighting going on between the two different here, uh, armies trying to seize control Find over Russia. And basically we are There's stuck trouble. in the middle and uh, <laughs> try to make it somehow out of it and without getting too much into trouble ourselves. Exactly, like uh, we shouldn't interfere. Uh, so that's why we yes, aren't sir. interfering. Uh, even as, as the Let's Legion Force. Yeah. So this part uh, we see now is of course the RTS part, which everybody yeah. can easily see. Um, but you are also picking up resources like cloth or right um, food and something. And this will become more uh, important in the strategy part that we are going to see after the mission is finished, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, there are two main parts. One of them is uh, the RTS and uh, the second is the management uh, and those are those parts are interleaved so it, now it's said that you should bring a scout over there so we have seen the different symbols over all of our soldiers so far i guess we can talk about the different classes in a minute want to be making enemies not to mention causing diplomatic incidents that endanger our new republic enough chatter Get back to the train. Maybe we can find more supplies on the way. Yeah, so uh, we learned what was the story behind this mission. Uh, that there were Mr. red soldiers uh, who took everything uh, from the villages. And as you mentioned, uh, there are different classes. Like uh, this far, there's four of five, four of five classes here in the mission. Uh, the rifleman. Uh, the rifleman is able uh, to do the bandit charge, uh, which is important uh, skill uh, that we are going to, to use later, uh, like how to storm enemy covers and stuff like that. The machine gunner, a machine gunner is able to uh, do the focused fire, uh, so we have a cone uh, where he's uh, shooting uh, with higher precision, and by being deployed, uh, the medic. Uh, they are medics are able to uh, heal others, obviously, uh, or, and later on they are even able to use things like sleep masks, yes, uh, sleep flasks. So, so sorry, yeah. So, uh, so that that provides you with additional utility in the missions. Yes, and there is a scout uh, who is able to use uh, binoculars uh, to reveal part of the part of the focal war in the mission. And cool. there's one more. 
uh, we don't have in this mission, uh, and that's the Grenadier. Like later on, as I play the missions, uh, I'm going to have the selection of who I actually take into the mission. Uh, so the what depends on me. Yeah. And now I have the goal to practice shooting on the scarecrows or stuffed witches. Well done, you have uh, won against the scarecrows. Congratulations! Yay! I need to kill or destroy to be precise three of them so here's another but yeah what we have here of course is our very first training mission which is mostly uh there to familiarize the players with the controls of the game exactly so yeah. i guess for everybody who has played uh, rts before he would feel he or she would feel right at home i guess exactly like uh we hope that the players are going to enjoy the rts missions as well as the management uh but uh when you played things like, for example, StarCraft, uh, you, you would feel like at home uh, with all the interface and uh, the controls of, of the missions. Okay, uh, so my last goal in this mission is to return uh, to the train, uh, because there's always some exit area, uh, which I need to uh, run to, uh, to depart from the mission. Bring the whole squad here before giving the command to leave. So, um, actually, earlier we had a question from the chat coming in um, mm -hmm. about the intro scene. If we were using real pictures from back in the days there, or if they were just, uh, yeah. you know, actors posing for the pictures, or what did we do? Uh, as for the intro scene, or uh, as for the history and speaking, uh, the pictures in, in behind uh, were actually real pictures uh, from this era. Yeah. Cool. Right, mission done. Hey. Big three. <laughs> now yeah, I can see how much XP uh, did uh, each of the soldiers get. Like there are different objectives. Each of them provide XP that, which is divided among all the soldiers in the squad. Uh, so the bigger the squad, uh, the less XP they get per one objective, uh, but the higher chances of success, obviously. Yeah. Sure. So. So there's no uh, performance boost if somebody is shooting more enemies or something like this, or healing more enemies, that he or she gets more XP? Uh, no, no. Like divided? Okay. <laughs> like, the important part is uh, pooping the objectives, not killing the enemies. Like, you can even uh, sneak around all the enemies uh, being unseen mm -hmm. and fulfill the objectives anyway. So uh, killing is not uh, what's necessary to do, yeah. I guess we can have a look at this in the next mission uh, because there is a stealth option actually, which yeah, we can yeah. show now, so that people exactly. can yeah. sneak around and hide themselves. And you have these uh, interesting cones that people might be uh, familiar with from games like, you know, Desperado 3 or Shadow Gambit or mm -hmm. Commandos. Yeah. But of course, we are not like a stealth game per se. It's like a RTS first exactly. and foremost, and then there's an option for stealth. Mm -hmm. That's put it like this, right? Yeah, uh, and there's a lot of dialogues even outside of the missions, mm -hmm. uh, as you can read, uh, and those dialogues are affected uh, by what soldiers do you happen to have at the train, for example. Uh, so here, uh, Maximilian Drab uh, has the trait of being intelligent, so it affected uh, the what he actually mentioned, and now I have the uh, possibility to select uh, two answers that I'm going to provide. So. Yeah, I know that we have to be neutral. Obviously, the soldiers fold the holders. No, we should be good. We should be good guys. I mean, we can't. Oh, sure. We're not good guys. <laughs> like in in the war, no no one's a good guy. I would dare say. But <laughs> but yeah, like the Czechoslovak Christians try, try to be as neutral as possible. Yeah. Okay, so now I know that we need to uh, proceed to Moscow as planned. There's going to be issues, obviously, but uh, we need to. Uh, try to negotiate our safe passage to Vladivostok. Let's go there. Let's hope and we have a new order. Yeah, we have a new order uh, from Major uh, that we need to replenish more supplies uh, in the next station. So let's head there. Here I can right. see uh, this is the map uh, of, of the country. Uh, I'm heading to Moscow to meet meet with uh, Langer, uh, and uh, here is the next stop. So I'm getting there. I can possibly even check uh, how the train's going. Uh, there's a beautiful view around. 
And each of the um, different uh, cars from the train have a different purpose, right? Yes, indeed. Like there's the locomotive, uh, which provides the propelling of the train. There's, for example, the artillery uh, car, uh, which allows you uh, to use a bombardment in the missions or take care yeah. of uh, enemy craft. Uh, there's a storage car, uh, which has all the storage necessary. Uh, I arrived to uh, Sukinichi meanwhile, it seems. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, we'll get to the uh, train cars a bit later. Yeah. Okay, I stood just before the station. And Major steps off to meet the General Morozo. Must be a friendly dude, right? Uh, to some degree. He mentions that uh, we have the mutual interest. Sounds good. Yeah. We just need to hand over our weapons. Ah. Hmm. What can possibly go wrong? Well, Major Kazik disagrees, obviously. But then, it seems like Morzov is going to disappear. Which is a good thing, isn't it? I hope so, I hope so. But yeah, like, Absolutely. we should head to Sukinichi. Uh, as you can see, here's the squad that I can select. Like, uh, currently I don't have the full control over uh, who's in the squad. And this is something that I'm going to uh, get later. There are even some trades of those soldiers so i can even check uh, those soldiers with their equipment uh, and even uh, for example their bios uh, like how, how do they happen to be in the war in the first place yeah uh, that's very interesting can you go back to that screen please if you don't mind sure indeed yeah cool like currently uh, because um there's, there's something I, I that caught my eye because we have like a combat role for the soldier mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. But we have even and the train roll. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so this is this is something that uh, you can combine. Uh, I'll get to how to move the train and how to take care of the uh, train rolls a bit later uh, after sure. the mission, I guess, uh, because now the mission is here to, to be handled. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's more details to be shared soon. Okay, so let's head to the mission. Okay, so we have a couple more questions from the chat, if you don't mind. Sure. So, for example, uh, Mepherion is asking if it's possible to customize your controls, that you have, like, for example, an A for attack move or something like that. Sure thing. Like, uh, I can even uh, show you that in, in a second. Move out, but keep your eyes and ears open. Okay. So, if I go to the options and to the controls, uh, I'm able to customize the uh, controls fully and even like uh, what's the attack everything so uh, there is just one preset at, at the moment uh, but uh, it, it, it works well uh, but if players want to use different force uh, different controls uh, then obviously they are free to and just as a reminder, uh, we are watching an early version of the game as uh, in a beta stadium, so it's definitely not the finished uh, version. That's yeah. why you're seeing some weird numbers everywhere and uh, something like this, and you know, the words uh, on, the, on the right uh, lower side and something like this. So this will, of course, be done and dealt with in the final game. Yeah. So we are now at the train station here, right? Um, yeah, exactly. It seems there has been like a lot of shooting, a lot of dead people lying around. Um, yeah. So yeah. Those rings, our, yeah. Yeah, and there's somebody that we can heal as well. Can you tell us what nice. happened here? The Red Someone's Army left. came for recruits and provisions. We told them to leave, but they just laughed and took whatever they wanted. They killed everyone who resisted. We saw trucks full of artillery shells driving towards the river. My sister lives there. I'm worried sick. Please, help. We came here to trade for supplies, not to get involved in Russian affairs. But the Reds attacked us before. They are clearly up to no good here. We simply cannot risk the train. So we have to go and find out what is going on. Looks like they sabotaged the bridge. We'll have to fix it to cross. 
You can find tools and materials in a nearby camp. Right over there. Okay, so I tried the healing skill with the medic. Okay, I'm going. Yes? And so are I these medical specific. supplies are they needed to perform the healing action or is yeah, it exactly. out of stuff? Yeah. So like uh, as you can see uh, to heal I, I need to use the medical kit. Uh, so I uh, collected the one that was in the box nearby and uh, when I used the medical kit uh, the medic actually uses uh, that to heal uh, the, the soldier that was injured or the civilian in, in this particular case. Yeah. Uh, and every soldier has the stabilized skill, uh, so if uh, their comrades uh, get uh, wounded and, and downed, uh, or their brothers in arms to be precise, uh, then uh, they are able to uh, stabilize them. Ah, okay, so now I encounter the enemies, so I'll try to move away, or to get to, to some let's say, more favorable position in cover. Um, because there's even the guide telling me to go to cover. Yeah, and the enemies are trying to shoot at me. I'm trying to deploy gun. the machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> so now, with both of the teams are in cover, um, yeah, okay, you see, like, it makes sense to like yes. try to flank the enemy, right? Yeah, well, exactly. That's important because but if everybody is covered, ready. it's hard to hit them, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, like uh, those are just uh, like some militia enemies, uh, but still, uh, if, when they are in cover, it's very difficult to hit them. Uh, so I'm trying to slowly get further. Ah, okay, there's additional enemy. If we don't have the range or grenades, we'll have to storm their position. Okay, so I'll try to. Here it's sneak around and there's not enough space so I may need to go get to cover and utilize my bayonet charge on the enemy while having the covering fire of the rest. Yeah, okay. Still work, that's cool. Out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if this is a valid tactic to just like storm directly at your enemy position. <laughs> I but it worked out. That's yeah. good. It was only one enemy, though. Exactly. <laughs> There's the difference. Like, uh, if you are storming multiple enemies, then uh, they are easily going to overwhelm you. Okay. So I switched to the silent mode. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can show the sneaky part. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the guy is uh, watching downwards. So I can try to sneak behind. Is there any uh, particular class very good at sneaking or is it all the same for every soldier? Uh, like the scout class is uh, really great at sneaking but I'm currently using uh, the rifleman because uh, they have the passive skill of moving faster. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are even sneaking faster. Uh, they are not sneaking per se, they are just moving silently uh, because emitting the noise around I would uh, just alert the enemy, uh, but this way around I'm able to get rid of them. And there's additional two enemies, so how should I handle them? First let's check where they are looking at, right? Yeah, exactly. What they are looking at. Okay, they are checking their campfire, so that's cool. Uh, that provides me with the chance to uh, do some, let's say, simultaneous uh, Sneak kill. Yeah. Ah, yeah, there's a guide about the tactical view. So I can even use the tactical view, uh, which pauses the game and shows me some additional information. Uh, like, for example, the, the range of, of my guns. And uh, this way I can assign orders. Like this. Okay. So I can either go here. And shoot them from behind the cover, or I can just take those two, fine gentlemen, I'm here. and just try to. Love, yeah, love the setup. There's like five soldiers directly standing behind them. They're not realizing anything. So <laughs> they're looking at the campfire. 
and now you're taking the out simultaneously because otherwise yeah. they would just be like, right? Exactly. Let's yeah. see how cool. bad the situation is. Perfect command mission. <laughs> yeah. Right, um... If I were injured, I... Question? Please go on, yes, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to go to another question um, from the chat. Um, so about the story part, right um, are, Strike131313 is asking, did you consult the story with some historians? And another part of his question is, how long will the, will the game approximately be? Yeah, so uh, as for the historians, uh, from the very start, uh, we were in uh, connection uh, with the uh, Czechoslovak regional community, uh, which is the community uh, here in the Czech Republic, uh, and they are taking care of the history of the Czechoslovak legionnaires. Yeah, uh, they even have some a museum on rails. Uh, they call it the Legion Train, uh, and that uh, museum uh, is moving across the Republic on rails, and you can just board it on uh, any station they stop and uh, see how the train actually uh, looked like back then because it's a, actually a replica of uh, the train uh, th that was used back then yeah okay uh, i got uh, an explosive uh, i got uh, a task to use the grenades here so let's make it boom and then i'll get back to the second question It's cool, but things go boom. That bridge looks perfect for an ambush. <laughs> yeah, nice explosions. <laughs> we should not proceed until we figure out what could await us on yeah. the other side. Does anyone have binoculars? And as for how long the game yes. actually is going to be, uh, like our test uh, tell, test tell us uh, that there's roughly 40 hours of Ready. gameplay. Uh, but keep in yes, mind sir. that uh, some of the parts really depend on the approach uh, that you take. Because if you take a stealth approach to, to the missions, it may take much longer than if you just turn the enemies. And uh, we try to provide players with the possibility to select their approach. Yeah, so uh, both approaches or even different approaches are viable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have the goal to see what's here. And now I see using my binoculars that there's a sizable enemy force. So. Uh, Striking them directly They'll be coming for us. may not be the best way. Let's set up the machine gun and give them Might be a job for a machine gun. Okay, so let's set here. Orders, let's take the machine gunner, station him here. Okay, deploying. I'm deploying the machine gun in cover. Here they come. Yeah. Stand your ground. And let's see how it goes. And just as a short reminder, we are still kind of in the introductionary missions where yeah. learning how the game is played is uh, key. So um, there is not much of a challenge at the moment. But I think later on in the missions, um, the you have to think for yourself. Not every single will be highlighted. And uh, yeah, on the you can actually so have a lot of complications with the enemy forces. Pay for their crimes. Exactly, yeah. And as we could have seen, like the last enemy who was running away uh, was actually killed by their own commissar uh, because uh, they were advancing in the wrong direction. Yeah. Okay, so my goal now is to use the artillery strike here because there are some explosives around. So I'll use the artillery strike from the artillery car. And yeah, it goes boom. Okay. We came here to get supplies for our journey. Oh, someone survived. To get them. Yay. Leave this place. Uh, I feel bad right, taking the, the supplies. Place. Always the best part. The Reds must have stolen them from the villagers. The villagers are dead. And we will be too if we don't get moving. But it's interesting because um, what the soldiers just were uh, chatting about, you are very often confronted with like a Ready moral dilemma. Sir. Because yeah. you have to take care of your soldiers, and by doing so, you might like steal right from the population, or you might even use violence. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a game of easy choices, right? Exactly. Like there are difficult decisions to be made, uh, even like outside and inside of the missions. 
Whoever left all this ammo behind must be very proficient with the bayonet. Well, if my machine gun runs out of ammo, it's dead weight. I'd just call for artillery support. Is that coal? Good. Fuel is the most precious resource on our journey. Oh, as the soldiers are chatting, we see that you can actually run out of ammunition for your weapons. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you do if you don't have any ammunition left? Fist fight? Melee, yeah, I could using the butt of the rifle. That helps. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yes, moving out. But yeah, like, you, you should yeah. take care of not running out of ammunition, obviously. Yeah, I was about to say that. Taking position. I'll see what's there. Let's see what's there. Yeah, looks cool. So yeah, let's advance here. So would you suggest that people are going to explore Let's all the RTS there. maps because there might be hidden resources yes. somewhere? Yes, like that really helps if you explore um, because then you take those resources uh, back to the train. Uh, so it's helpful for you. Yeah, and those brothers in arms and sisters uh, that uh, helped us throughout the mission, they just left. So at the very end of the mission, I need to assign three medals uh, to my soldiers. So, who was the best uh, soldier in the mission? Who oh, do you the think? Machine gunner. The mission Definitely gunner. The machine yeah. Gunner, yeah. Was yeah. the Antonin, right? Yeah, that, that, that was him. Yeah. And who yeah, else? Just, the, the medic is like the most important part, right? Sure. She takes yeah. care that everybody survives. Yeah. And, uh, and she really helps. Maximilian, yeah. Maximilian Drap was our uh, scout, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I guess he did a good job in okay. scouting. Yeah. Poor, poor, poor Patrick, but yeah, he's going to make it next, next time. Sorry. <laughs> so what do, do these medals uh, bring for the soldiers? Uh, those medals actually provide them with uh, more XP uh, that they can uh, earn. Uh, so that helps. And then uh, you can just check their bios, uh, like how many medals did they accumulate across uh, the whole campaign. Oh, nice. So speaking of level ups, I mean, Antonin uh, seems to have like a level up, right? Yeah. Oh, even all three of them have. Like That's good because everyone actually the one... got the level up, yeah. Because. Uh, awesome. Be but yeah, some of them got promoted. Uh, that's a difference because you have a. <laughs> oh, okay. As you can see, you have uh, the rank here, Lance Corporal versus the Private. So the three of them who got the medal, they got promoted, and that provides them with additional benefits, uh, whereas they leveled up. The, the role so uh, he's now the level 2 machine gunner uh, she's the level 2 medic and stuff like that and that's going to provide them uh, with additional benefits uh, let's see it in a few yeah so let's check if i did everything if so okay cool yeah so let's leave the mission and see what's the aftermath if you were not uh, be happy with your result, you can just restart the mission, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're heading to, to Moscow, and it seems like it's going to be difficult. And new regional generals, like those three uh, final people, uh, fine people who were there in the mission, uh, they joined us, uh, so uh, we can use them on the train, which is great. And they joined us, including their weapons. Okay, uh, now I'm going to pause the game, uh, so I can go through uh, the details of, of what actually uh, happened. Yeah, like uh, there were mo multiple people who get their rank up, uh, multiple people who uh, got improved roles, which means uh, that uh, they got the level up. Uh, so let's see uh, their rank ups first. Yeah, so uh, this is the Antonin, uh, the mission gunner, and. Uh, as he uh, got promoted to a high rank, uh, he got a new attribute point. So I can uh, select which attribute is he going to improve. Yeah. And I guess- If you hover over them with the mouse, you can actually see what these uh, stats are doing, right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah so dex. Mm -hmm. I, I would say so that the dexterity makes sense uh, for a machine gunner. Uh, later, uh, they are going to get more dexterity uh, even from the level ups, so uh, I need to make sure uh, that I balance well how much uh, do I actually spend in the attribute points and how I diversify them uh, between all those attributes. And uh, 
yeah i think that the sooner uh, they reach uh, the, the 10 of uh, the, the attribute the better for me so i'm going to use uh, the attribute point for dexterity yeah uh, now aim and reload time seems the perfect uh, attribute yeah. for a machine gunner exactly and he even leveled up uh, which provided him with a new passive skill uh, control burst mm. uh, that i can equip i don't need to like i can uh, just uh, use this as it is, or uh, use the controlled burst, yeah. And as for the rest, uh, Magdana got promoted as well. Uh, so, as she's the medic, uh, she uses intelligence uh, for healing. Yeah, like, uh, it affects the work efficiency for uh, doctors, for example, and some combat skills. So, let's increase her intelligence. And uh, she has the head down, uh, pass it now. Uh, this will come in handy. So she's exactly. harder to hit while she's uh, healing the other soldier, right? Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> and as for Maximilian, yeah, he, he got the attribute point as well. And I'm going to use it for dexterity. And he has two new skills, one of them active, distract, and that he just throws a stone. And uh, the enemies are looking to a different direction, hopefully. And the quick feed, uh, which is already something that the rifleman has at the first level, uh, so the scouts learned that at the second level, and it allows them uh, to move uh, faster. Yeah. So I'm going to equip the, both of those skills. Yeah. And so um, while you're doing this, I would ask a couple of more questions from sure. the chat. So um, the first one is by Lord Turtle seventy two. Is this game in Czech language? Um, yes. Right, so you have like check voiceovers as well as check text uh, that you can choose. Exactly. Like correct? as for the voiceovers, uh, we are actually having the game in English, in French, and in German, and then we have something that we call the immersive uh, voiceover, uh, which is uh, the the, the legionnaires uh, speak Czech and Slovak, uh, and even in dialogues like uh, other uh, people speak Czech and Slovak, uh, but uh, in in the fight. Uh, when you hear enemies, uh, they speak Russian uh, because that's their na na native language. Yeah, uh, so it's easily distinguishable who's yelling at you and what are the orders actually all about. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I managed to um, handle the level ups. Yes, please go on. Yeah, another question was uh, when the game is launching. Uh... I can quickly uh, tell you this uh, when it's ready. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, you have just the team is uh, still in full work uh, on the game, and um, once we are really happy with the game's state and um, we think it's a good time to ship, then we will announce it. But yeah, exactly soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As no one was hurt, I don't need to heal people. Uh, but uh, before uh, we discussed uh, what are all the cars all about. So uh, we stopped with the storage car. Uh, storage car provides you with uh, storage capacity uh, for all the inventory that you have, be it weapons, be it uh, ammunition, uh, be it even uh, fuel and that's necessary and food. Yeah. So uh, and there are even consumables. Yeah. So you can check that. Uh, there's infantry cars uh, that provide you with, with space for your crew, and you can upgrade them. Uh, to make them more cozy like there's plenty of the upgrades in this train already uh, which is cool and there's for example the hospital car uh, which allows you to uh, heal your people uh, should they be injured uh, in, in, in the missions or should they uh, suffer some illness or something like that yeah so that means um, throughout your journey you will have multiple options to upgrade and to modify the train, correct? You can get yes, new exactly. cars, a new locomotive, uh, and upgrade them, make them stronger, more durable, whatever. Yeah, like this really depends on you, like what upgrades are you going to spend your resources on, uh, because there's uh, plenty of resources like uh, resources types, uh, but on the other hand, uh, you don't have uh, quite enough of them. Uh, so. Uh, this way, like I have just 50 gun power, uh, which is something that I can uh, be uh, getting rid of quite fast. Yeah. Ah, now I have some uh, quest here, it seems. So, yeah, we are low on some critical supplies. Uh, 
he took <laughs> something from Tsukinichi, which is, which is great, but we still have a long way home. So there's a village called Kaluga. Okay, so I'll send the squad. Let's stop the train for a bit and see. Yeah, here's Kaluga. I'll pause the time. Okay, so I'm going to drive the train closer, actually. Uh, it's going to uh, stop behind the river. I can I can see how it's going uh, to the bridge. Yes, and crossing the river. And as soon as I do so, it should stop. Like uh, I use the waypoint, so it's going to stop automatically. Yeah, it's stopping. That's cool. And now I can check the village of Kaluga and select my squad. To do so, I'll disband the initial squad and create a new one uh, because uh, the people who are actually going to go there, uh, they have different traits and some of the traits are more beneficial than others. Uh, well, for example, now I'm going shopping, uh, so uh, this trait uh, is great that uh, it grants me with the better pri prices with the, when I'm trading. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm use person. Poor Alfred. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, they are not necessarily a great person, uh, but it affects even the narrative in dialogues stuff like that, and uh, but it grants better prices. Yeah, so totally worth it. And yeah, I'll send for example, I'll be with them. That should be cool. And I deploy it. And now I need to just wait a bit until they manage to go to Kaluga. We and do have a question from Mista actually. Uh, he's asking Can you stop and explore any time, like the woods, or is it only possible to stop and explore at some certain points on the map? Yeah, like uh, there are different points uh, that you can visit, uh, but you can stop your train anytime. Uh, the issue is that uh, later in the game uh, that may become quite d dangerous because the enemies may try to gather on your position. Uh, so by stopping you actually alert them more and that uh, provides you with something we call threat. And if the threat is high uh, there's a risk of uh, getting hit by enemy strikes and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, there's a uh, quite a few uh, points around the track all the time uh, that you can uh, send your squad to. Okay, so now I'm shopping. I can possibly get a bit more story as well. Like the old man's going to tell me something more about the, the reds. Okay. And now... Like preparing for another war. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I can even see what are the beneficial traits here on the merchant. Cool. Uh, and I'm going to buy some more cloth and buy some more herbs. So that should help me. And even some fuel. I think that I don't need wood. I have plenty already. Yeah, so that should be okay. Um, what do you need herbs for? I mean, Besides making the food taste better, uh, it's not only, not only about the food tasting better, uh, but as, as you can uh, ch check in the train, ah, and it, I'll possibly send the squad back first. Uh, here, I can assign uh, the doctors, and uh, ah, okay. they can craft something. And to craft uh, the medical kit, for example, they require herbs, or I can ah, research okay. uh, various things like first aid kit which requires quite some herbs and cloth. So yeah, well, I'm oh. here. I'll use the time to research that. Yeah, and the squad is returning to the train meanwhile. Cool. I find it so funny whenever you open like a window and uh, to explain something, uh, I get more and more questions because it looks like the game is very deep. They have many, many options uh, the further you go ahead, right? Yeah, like it really is. Like there's plenty of details that you need to take care of or you don't need to, but if you do, it provides you with benefits. Like for example here, uh, as I send the squad uh, with people who are, let's say not that great person, uh, but uh, they are great at haggling, uh, I got better prices at the, at the merchant. 
which definitely pays off. Yeah. Okay, let's head to Moscow then. Nice. So we have a question about the music, which is actually asked by Pirotsek. I think yeah. I pronounced that right. Sorry if not. Um, he says he really loves the background music. Will there be something like a YouTube playlist or a Spotify list? It's like yeah. a focus at work music or something like this. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about the music? Where does it come from? Or Sure. Like uh, The music is uh, actually made by uh, the group called Dynamidian. Uh, and they provided us with, with the music. We asked for it. And uh, the music is actually a great combination of uh, Slavic uh, music themes, let's say. Uh, it's based on uh, works of, uh, for example, Bezik Smetana. Uh, from the uh, my, my country cycle, uh, which is well known in the Czech Republic because it's a Czech author, uh, and uh, it provides you with uh, the feeling of uh, yeah, this is the Czech soldiers uh, in Russia. Like uh, you can hear uh, various uh, instruments that are native to Russia, uh, but you can hear the themes that are purely Czech. Uh, so that's a great combination. Actually, and I learned about Smetana when I went to school, which is some 30 years ago. Whoa, but whoa, uh, yeah. still, yeah, I mean, it's like a very famous uh, composer. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, people can should know him. Yeah, and <laughs> if getting, you're into classical music, that is. <laughs> and getting back to the question, uh, like uh, we aim to have the soundtrack uh, available uh, at the release, so you, you can listen to, to it not only by running the game in the background, because that's something that you usually don't do at work. Uh, but uh, you can even uh, get get it on Steam. Ah, okay, so something broke. Ah, damn. Okay, but uh, I can actually ut utilize the time uh, that when I'm going to, to be fixing uh, it. Uh, so first, let's start fixing it, yeah, because that helps. So there's a, an engine malfunction. And to fix it, I need to select people who are going to do so with the correct uh, trainer order. Like, they need to be workers. And here I can see that uh, this one is in squad, so I'm not going to use, use him. Uh, but Bedrich uh, doesn't do anything at the moment, uh, so I'm going to use Bedrich. And I'm going to use Dushan uh, to fix that. Uh, as, they are, as there are two of them working on it, it's going to be faster than if just one of them was uh, working on that. Okay. And uh, yeah, I can see that uh, there's a forest and a lake. Uh, those are different uh, places that uh, we can use to uh, get more food from. Like we can forage in the forest or we can catch fish uh, in the lake. Uh, the difference is uh, that if I'm going to the forest, it's going to take uh, to cost me some uh, stamina of the soldiers, uh, but it's going to be instant. Whereas if I'm going to the lake, it's not going to cost the stamina because the soldiers are actually just being there sitting and fishing uh, but uh, it's going to uh, think, take some time uh, to catch the fish yeah so uh, that's always a decision that i need to make so i'll start with, with the forest and uh, yeah i'll try to edit the squad you can actually do both at the same time. I mean, you can like deploy two different squads, right? I can, yeah, 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 yes, indeed. Uh, but I can even go there with one squad and then use the same squad to go to the other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm deploying the squad. As you can see, I have the hunter, which is great. The herbalist, uh, which would be great in the forest as well. Uh, so let, let's use that. I'm deploying them, and yeah. I pause the time, so the squad is heading there. So by the way, we had another question coming in a bit earlier um, up from newer ZZ. Um, are the names of the characters used real historical names? <laughs> uh, we actually decided not to use real historical names. Uh, like some of the names are the members from the team, for example, uh, and some of the names are based on uh, like the historical names, uh, but uh, we didn't want to use uh, the real historical names because uh, if someone dies, for example, or some someone does something that doesn't fit uh, the person's life, uh, it, it would be difficult uh, for their ancestors 
uh, to actually come on terms with that. Yeah, so we decided uh, for fictional names because this is the, let's say, fictional last train. Yeah. Okay, meanwhile, I uh, arrived to the forest so I can use uh, this squad to forage. And here's the report. So Maximilian is telling me that we gathered what's usable. And Maximilian even has the trade hunter. Uh, so he caught something more. That's great. And uh, Antonin has herbalist. So he got some herbs. That's cool. And uh, yeah, Alfred uh, ate some poison poisonous berries. Okay, so I'm, I need to check uh, what actually happened there. And yeah, he's now ill uh, due to that. Uh, so I can see that as for food, the base amount, if I just sent uh, random soldiers there, uh, would be 28 food that I would get. Uh, but thanks to the trades, I got a lot more food and I got a lot uh, more herbs because I wouldn't get any herbs otherwise. Uh, so that really helped me. And I, I even got some XP. That, that's cool. But I need to check uh, the squad because it seems like Alfred is ill. Alfred is ill, and yeah, it maybe is due to uh, his bad, bad luck charm. Uh, like the accidents happened to uh, him and nearby people. So yeah, maybe that's the that's the reason why he ate the uh, the berries. Yeah. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use the same squad, even though Alfred is ill, uh, and reroute them to the lake. Meanwhile, the train uh, was repaired and started moving. We actually pick up the soldiers. Very handy. Yeah, um, exactly. I've got a question. Can you, can you leave your soldiers behind? Like you, them you don't want to, uh, but if you forget them, uh, at the very end of each segment, like for example here, uh, the chapter ends with in, in Moscow and that segment ends uh, at the same place, uh, It the game asks you if you would like to leave your soldiers behind and stuff like that. It just double checks uh, if you are aware of your actions and the consequences of them. So in that case, if I would say no, uh, my soldiers, I would just have to wait until my soldiers have marched up to Moscow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Which would have taken quite some time, <laughs> as you can see. And meanwhile, the other soldiers are going to eat all the food that you've gathered. Yeah, so I arrived to the lake. And as I can get food and I can use the hunter trade. So let's do it. Let's wait a bit. Even started to rain. Yeah. And even the shifts in the train uh, changed because now it's a night shift. So as you can see here, uh, there are engineers and uh, workers like stoking uh, the furnace uh, in different shifts. Uh, so you need to have enough of them because they technically can work both shifts, uh, but then they would go tired. Yeah. And the report here is ready. And the lake was full of fish, yay! And uh, he was able to pull one fish after another. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> that is great. So yeah. And they want a medal for fishing. More food, yay! That, that's great. So I'll return to, to the train. Which is now conveniently close. And I still need to take care of uh, poor Alfred, who is now ill. Uh, so I'm going to uh, put him uh, to, to the hospital car because uh, that's going to help with the illness. Yeah. One thing to keep in mind uh, about the shift, uh, not only that it affects uh, the train itself, uh, but it affects even the world. Uh, so uh, that means that if you go to the mission in night, uh, obviously you are go going to uh, see the night around, so uh, the mission may be a bit more difficult for you uh, to uh, see all the things. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to go for Moscow now, which I should, uh, then I would rather wait uh, for the morning, uh, which uh, would help me to see the mission better, and uh, which would even help me to get 
uh, poor Alfred healed meanwhile. Yeah. What exactly does it mean to see the mission better? So your soldiers have like reduced uh, sight, or what's going on if it, if you um, start a RTS mission during the night? Yeah, like we considered uh, if it's going to affect even the uh, sight of the uh, soldiers, uh, but in in the end, uh, as uh, it would take quite a lot of waiting. Uh, for the players to wait for the right time of day uh, we decided against that uh, but uh, it affects how the mission actually looks uh, because as you can see uh, in the night it's all uh, like lit just by the moonlight uh, whereas uh, during the day uh, the, it's more colorful so you can distinguish more details yeah mm -hmm. ah now the journal opened for me yeah so i can even have the overview of, of the journey so this is the first chapter, and yeah, there are the events that happened. Cool. Okay. And meanwhile, I am traveling to Moscow. Like a true journal, you can uh, re-watch your adventures. Exactly. Yeah. And it even contains like uh, the description of uh, the quest that I have. Like, currently, I have just the, the main objective here, uh, like uh, getting to Moscow. Uh, but uh, oftentimes it may happen that there are more objectives around here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm approaching Moscow and it's getting quite late. Uh, I guess that we are not going to go into Moscow now. What do you think? No, I don't think so. I think for the very first glance at our game, that should be enough for today, I guess. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I'd say we will... Um, kind of finished now and uh, thank you everyone for joining us for watching and of course you can add the game to your wish list on steam if you just for search for last train home you can easily find it there and of course you can also like visit our website if you want to learn more infos about the game so as i said thank you very much for joining us petka thank you so much for all the information you provided and um, thank you. yeah really looking forward to finally play the finished game once you guys are done we are working on that yeah Thanks a lot uh, for great questions. Like it was a pleasure. Absolutely. So uh, thank you everyone and see you soon. Have a great night. Goodbye. Bye bye.